All right, today I'm gonna to go over the general disassembly and field stripping of the Browning Auto 5. Um, this is my Sweet 16 that I hunt with uh, for upland hunting and any other kind of wing shooting. Uh, if you've never held a Sweet 16, they're just, they just balance phenomenally and I think they're just kind of the class act of the Auto 5 world. Um, they're pretty s simple to field strip and clean. There is some minor things you need to do each season to just to kind of make sure that it's going to function right but uh, I'm going to walk you through that. So first one thing that I'll start with will obviously make sure it's unloaded which it is and there is nothing in the mag tube. Um, check on auto fives where your carry handle or where your uh, charging handle is you want to be able to see a little sliver of barrel in there. Um, so in mine you can it's probably won't focus here but there is just the ever so the slightest sliver there. Um, if there isn't, you need to really consider getting the forearm either replaced or repaired. Um, what can happen is this charging handle can actually contact the receiver and that'll give you a crack. And I'll show you where that contact point is once we get this assembled, but basically what that spacing is dictated by is the wood inside the forearm here. So it's compresses after many years of use and it can be re repaired um, it's not that easy of a repair but it can be done um, Art down in I'm not sure where he's at but Art's gun shop he is the main guy for kind of auto five stuff um, but he can do a proper repair on it so I'm going to show you how to disassemble it real quick first part's going to be a little bit out of frame apologize for that but it's pretty simple after that uh, tool I'm using here, these mag tube padded pliers. These are from Brownells. They have pins in the jaws here, so you can replace them after they're worn out. This is actually a brand new set, so it works out pretty well. Um, what I like to do is just crack this loose once. This mag tube cap has little detents in it, and there's a spring and plunger inside the forearm here. So you'll actually feel it clicking. You don't want to unscrew it fully right now because you're under spring pressure of that full recoil spring, which is a very stout spring. But you're going to stand it up on edge and basically pull down on the barrel while unscrewing this. Like I said, I'm going to be out of frame for a second. And as you're pulling it out, this is what it's going to kind of look like. You can pull the forearm off first too if you'd like, but... This is just how it came off from me while I'm kind of showing you guys this. So this spacing right here is what I was talking about as far as where that uh, that little sliver of metal that you're looking for is. We, having it disassembled at this point, you can see that charging handle is touching the receiver there. If you were to pull this back and release it, you definitely could damage that. So just be careful of that. You want to let it down easy. Uh, some people like to pull the bolt back when they're taking that barrel out. I don't find it necessary, but uh, to each their own. But uh, just be careful on that. Um, also, one last thing on the forend. Here's that little detent that I was talking about. A little spring-loaded detent that catches those knobs or those notches in that magazine end tube, end cap. So, for, Auto Five forearms are notorious for cracks. So I'll go ahead and give that a little quick inspection while you have it apart. Um, if it is cracked, like this one was and it was repaired, if it is cracked, put some glue in there. Um, you might need to pin it. All depends on how bad it is. So now you have your recoil spring and friction ring assemblies. I have this set up for light loads. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off. Um, there's tons of videos on the friction ring setup. I'm not gonna go over that here. Uh, one thing I'll go over is proper lubrication of this because this is super important. Um, I've actually, a funny story I wrote about in an article I'll link to the bottom of the text part of this, but I was hunting sharp tails and shot once, missed, went to shoot again, dead trigger, malfunction. My wife laughed at me because I'm a gunsmith and my gun isn't working correctly. She found that very humorous. Uh, the reason it was not is because this tube wasn't properly oiled. These are somewhat finicky. I don't, finicky is the wrong word because they're very reliable when they're set up right. But you don't want to 
If you over lubricate it, it won't function properly. And if it's not lubricated, it won't function properly. So when you apply that, what I normally like to do, I'm just using the Sage and Raker CLP here. I like this stuff a lot. It's non-toxic, smells really good. But I'm gonna kinda spray that on there pretty heavily. And then I'm gonna wipe it dry. Not dry, I guess, but I'm gonna wipe the majority of it off. So you should just feel a slick, a little bit slick there, but not, it, you, it shouldn't be running. There shouldn't be any major buildups there, but that is properly lubed now. You can see you got a little bit of grime off that. Now, the barrel extension. This is another piece that rides in, inside that receiver. Just give that a nice light coat of oil. Um, this isn't as important as it is, or the amount isn't as important as it is here. Um, but just a light coat of oil will work. And lastly, you're going to want to clean the bore. Um, use a proper fitting bore brush or bore snake, whatever you prefer. And uh, yeah, clean that bore out. Uh, reassembly is exactly the same. Make sure you have your, once again, make sure you have your friction ring set up properly. Um, then also, as you reassemble it, you don't need these for reassembly. This shouldn't. This should only be an assembly tool. For reassembly, just go hand tight on it. Um, once again, they have those detents in there, and that'll keep that at that proper tension. But uh, if you guys have any questions on this, go ahead and shoot me a uh, or shoot me a message or comment on this, and let me know what you have, and I'll try to answer it for you. But uh, anyways, doing this once a year for your A5 can make it last. A lifetime and prevent it from any uh, major damage down the road but uh yeah thanks for thanks for watching and I'll put a link to the link in the bottom for these pliers here and I'll also link that article that I wrote regarding this